I'm Sarah of Ridge Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet this Christmas tree ornament, this Christmas tree bauble. And uh, it is uh, an easy pattern. It's made basically using one stitch, which is your single crochet and the back loop only, along with a few single crochet two togethers. It also features some color work here uh, where you will work the tree and we're go going to go over that together. This ornament is worked around one of these uh, plastic DIY baubles. You're welcome to use one similar. This has a 10 inch circumference. Uh, or you may upcycle one that you have at home. Or uh, the instructions will also include a modification so that you can fully close the top and simply stuff one for your Christmas tree. For this pattern, I'm going to be using about 50 yards uh, of this uh, Lion Brand Heartland yarn. It is a worsted weight yarn, so you can use any worsted weight yarn of your choice. I have selected two colors. You'll have a color A and a color B. I put 50 yards for each because depending on the technique you will use, uh, you may need 50 yards in your color A. Um, but you may not, you may need uh, quite a bit less, so it's really up to you and I'll explain that when we get there. You're also going to need a 4 millimeter crochet hook, a stitch marker because we're going to be working in continuous rounds, and it will also be helpful to have a copy of the written crochet pattern, which can be found for free on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. I will have the direct link there for you in the notes of this video. Uh, in that written pattern, you will find a chart which is going to help you work the Christmas tree design. So once you have all your materials together, uh, you can uh, grab your hook and we'll get started working this simple Christmas tree bobble. So to begin our Christmas tree ornament, what we are going to do is we are either going to start by making a magic ring that we will work into, or you can start by chaining four and joining with the slip stitch in the first chain to make your ring. I'm going to start by just making a simple magic ring. And while I do that, I'd like to welcome you and uh, invite you to s subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's updated weekly with free crochet patterns such as this one and uh, stitch, stitch tutorials. So once you have your magic ring or your chain four ring, you're going to chain one. And then you're going to work six single crochet stitches into the center of that ring. to pull my magic ring closed. In this pattern you are going to be working in continuous rounds so you will not be joining or turning at the end of each round. Instead you're going to be marking your first stitch with a stitch marker. For round two you're going to working in the back loop only so your back loop is that horizontal bar that's furthest away from you when you look at the top of your stitch. You're going to insert your hook under that back loop only and work two single crochet stitches in each stitch all the way around. At the end of this round, you're going to have a total of 12 single crochets. I'm working in the back loop only all the way around. For round three, you are going to work two single crochet stitches into your first stitch. Remember to mark your first stitch, followed by one single crochet in the next. You're going to repeat that all the way around, always working in the back loop only. Two single crochet stitches in the next stitch, followed by one in the next. At the end of this round, you will have a total of 18 stitches. For 
For round four, continue working in your back loop only. You're going to work two single crochet stitches in the next stitch. Followed by one single crochet in each of the next two stitches and then repeat. Two single crochet stitches in the next stitch and one in each of the next two. Repeat that all the way around. At the end of this round, you're going to have a total of 24 stitches. For round five, you're going to work two single crochet stitches in the next stitch. Followed by one single crochet stitch in each of the next three stitches. You're going to repeat that all the way around, two in the next stitch, followed by one in each of the next three. And at the end of this round, you're going to have a total of 30 stitches. For round six, you're going to work two stitches in your next stitch, two single crochets, followed by one single crochet stitch in each of the next four stitches. At this point, you will notice that your work is, uh, the circle is getting uh, quite a bit larger and we're going to continue these increase rounds for two more rounds. So work two single crochet stitches in the next stitch followed by one in each of the next four and at the end of this round you will have a total of 36 stitches. For round seven, you're going to continue working in your back loop only. Work two single crochet stitches in the next stitch. And then one single crochet stitch in each of the next five. Repeat that all the way around. Two single crochets in the next stitch followed by one single crochet in each of the next five. At the end of this round, you will have a total of 42 stitches. For round eight, this is our final increase round. You're going to work in the back loop only, two stitches in the next stitch, two single crochet stitches, followed by one single crochet in each of the next six stitches. Repeat that, two single crochets in the next stitch followed by one in each of the next six. At the end of this round, you are going to have a total of 48 stitches. Okay, so now at the end of round eight, you're going to have something that looks uh, similar to this, and we've completed now our increase rounds. At this time, we are going to start working our color work. So what I encourage you to do is uh, head on over to my blog there and you can either print off this chart directly from my blog or uh, you can download the PDF, uh, purchase the PDF from one of my shops and uh, print off the chart from there. But you will see a chart such as this one there and on this chart, it's quite easy to read. Each block equals one single crochet stitch. When you're working your chart, if you're working, if you're right-handed, you're going to be working your chart from right to left, and you're always going to be working in the same direction, okay? Um, 
So you're going to start down here in this uh, right hand corner. This is your first single crochet stitch, stitch. There are 48 columns in this grid, one for each stitch all the way around your ornament. So for the first round, for instance, you're going to work 24 single crochet stitches in your color A. You will switch to color B, work one single crochet in your color B, and then work the rest in your color A. Okay, so that's what we're going to work, do. And then um, you'll continue on, so that'll be round nine, then round 10, you're just going to go back and you're going to start once again from the right-hand side if you're right-handed and uh, work across your chart that way. So to begin, what I'm going to do is I'll set my chart there aside. I would keep yours on hand for reference there so you uh, are aware of when your color changes are and we're going to work uh, this chart together. We always remember to remove your stitch marker and place it back again on that first stitch. Again, you will always be working in the back loop of your uh, stitches. So according to our chart, we're going to work one single crochet stitch in our color A for 24 stitches. So there's my first. And then for 24 stitches, work one single crochet in each stitch. There's 10. There's 20, 22, and 23. Now for my 24th stitch, because I want to switch to my next color um, for the following stitch, I'm not going to complete my 24th stitch in my color A. What I'm going to do for my 24th stitch, because I want to change colors, I'm going to insert my hook into the back loop only of that stitch, yarn over and drop a loop. I'll have two loops on my hook. I'm then going to drop my color A. I'm going to pick up my color B and place it on my hook. I will then draw that color B through those two loops to complete that 24th single crochet stitch. I'm now ready to continue on and work my next stitch, I'll show you on the chart here, that 25th stitch in my color B. So I work the 25th stitch, but again I want to change back to my color A. So I'm going to insert my hook, I'm going to carry my yarn in behind, I'm going to yarn over and draw up a loop. You'll have two loops on your hook. I want to switch back to my color A, I'm going to drop that working yarn. I'm going to pick up my color A once again and complete the stitch. So you will have now worked your one stitch in your color A. I'm then going to, according to my chart, simply continue working in my color A all the way around. Okay, so I'm going to do that now and we will go over our color changes once again when I come back around. Uh, now at this time I will also explain there are two options at this point for your color A. Uh, typically I would leave it attached and I'm just going to let it hang down. Now some people like to carry this non-working yarn in behind their work and work over top of it like this all the way around. Uh, and you can do that if, depending on the project uh, it might be beneficial to do that. Now for this one because you're not going to see the inside of your work it's going to be around this plastic bauble so you're not going to see anything in behind. What I like to do is I just like to leave it hanging and then I pick it up when I come back around 
for the second round. It uses a little bit less yarn uh, and I don't run the risk of pulling that yarn in behind too tightly. So I just let it fall. I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to work my single crochet stitches all the way back around to my stitch marker. I am now at the end of round nine. You can see my one lowly gold stitch down here. I'm back at my stitch marker and I'm now ready to start round 10. So I go back to my chart and looking at the next row up, so this second row now, I'm going to take a quick look. I'm going to do in color A in these white boxes, one stitch for each of the next 24 stitches. I have one in gold and then the rest are in my color A. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I did for my last round. Always again, working in the back loop only. I'm working one stitch in each of the next uh, 24 stitches in A. There's 10. Now again, after my 24th stitch, I'm going to be switching to my next color. So in my 24th stitch, I'm going to insert my hook, hook, yarn over and drop a loop. Two loops on my hook, I'm going to drop my color A. I need my color B, so I'm just going to pick it up and it's conveniently already attached. I'm just going to place it on my hook and yarn over and pull it through those two loops. I'm now ready to work my next stitch in that color B. So I insert my hook, yarn over, drawing up my loop. I need to switch back to my color A. So I pick up my yarn, my color A, yarn over and pull through. And now I'm ready to continue on once again with my color A. And you will have worked now the two stitches that you need to have worked in your color B. So then you're going to continue on to your stitch marker to complete that round and I'll show you one more round um, just to make sure that you've got the hang of following the chart and reading the color changes and uh, then I'll leave you to complete your tree. So I've now completed round 10. I have the two uh, color B stitches such as the one here on my chart. Now I'm going to move on to my round 11, which is this third row right here on my chart. Looking at my chart, it looks like I'm going to be working in color A, one single crochet in each stitch for 20 stitches. Then I'm going to switch to my color B, work nine stitches in my color B, switch back to my color A and complete the round. So working in the next stitch with your color A, work one single crochet in each of the next 20 stitches. There's 10. and then 19 and then one more but because I want to switch to my color B I'm not going to complete the stitch in my color A. Insert your hook, yarn over. Now in behind you're going to want to pick up your color B 
and you're going to want to make sure that your color B uh, remains fairly loose when you pull it over if you haven't worked it uh, holding it all the way around. So I just uh, loosely make sure it's not pulling your fabric so that it's buckling or anything. Uh, you don't want it too loose but you want it just laid gently across the back of your work. Pick it up and put it onto your hook. You're now going to continue with your color B for nine stitches and here I would work over top of the color A in back. So there's one, two, and you can see my color A is in behind there. It's not showing through at all. Three, four, and five. I'm going to continue. Oh, there we go. Continue working for four more stitches. There's six, seven, eight, and then after that ninth stitch, I want to switch back to my color A. And then I can continue on with the pattern uh, in color A all the way around. So that's all there is to this chart. Once again, I encourage you to head over to my blog. You can print it directly from my blog, or you may purchase the PDF and print it from there. But uh, I'm not going to go over the rest of the tree in this video. Print off the chart, continue to work the chart as I have shown you here, and then meet me back here and we will work the decrease rounds together. So I have now worked uh, through to the end of round 19 and I have followed my chart and uh, if you have as well you'll have a, an image that looks something like this now on this uh, little bit of a sleeve that you have uh, for your Christmas bauble and what you're going to do at the end of round 19 is if you are uh, working around one of these plastic di DIY bulbs you're going to simply insert it into you're welcome to weave in your ends there uh, on the inside first you're just going to insert it into the sleeve just like so and the rest of the ornament is going to be worked around it okay so we're now going to start the uh, our decrease rounds and they're worked uh, similarly to the increase rounds that we worked, but instead of working two single crochets into the stitches, we're going to be working single crochet two togethers. So for your round 20, again, you're going to continue working in the back loop only. When working around the ornament, I find just pulling it forward just a little bit uh, helps me to get my hook in and keep my stitches nice and tight. For round 20, you're going to start by working in the back loop only, and you're going to work a single crochet two together over the next two stitches. To work your single crochet two together, you're going to insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over and drop a loop. You'll have two loops on your hook. You're going to insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and drop a loop. With three loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over and draw through all three. That is your single crochet two together. I'm going to replace my stitch marker. You're then going to work one single crochet stitch in each of the next six stitches. Now you're going to repeat single crochet two together and single crochet in each of the next six stitches. You're going to continue this all the way around and uh, at the end of this round you will have 42 stitches. For round 21, continue working in the back loop only. You're going to start by working a single crochet two together over the next two stitches. 
followed by a single crochet in each of the next five. Repeat that, single crochet two together, followed by a single crochet in each of the next five. Uh, continue that all the way around, and at the end of round 21, you will have a total of 36 stitches. For round 22, continue working in the back loop only. Single crochet two together over the next two stitches. And then work one single crochet stitch in each of the next four stitches. Repeat, single crochet two together, followed by one single crochet in each of the next four. Repeat that all the way around, and then at the end of this round, you will have a total of 30 stitches. Round 23, continue working in the back loop only. You're going to single crochet two together over the next two stitches. And then work one single crochet in each of the next three. Repeat that all the way around. And then at the end of this round, you will have a total of 24 stitches. Round 24, continue working in the back loop only, and you're going to single crochet two together, followed by single crochet in each of the next two stitches. If you are working around the, um, the ornament, the bauble, such as I am, um, this is going to be your final round. And at the end of this round, you will have a total of 18 stitches. If you are uh, not working around another ornament and you would like to finish off the ornament and close it in, what you're going to do is you're going to continue working these decrease rounds. Uh, so your next round will be a single crochet two together followed by a single crochet in the next stitch and then your round after that will be a single crochet two together all the way around. So you just want, uh, if you're not working around the bobble, just to continue working uh, your decrease rounds. As you get closer, closer to the top, it does get a little bit tighter and more challenging to work. There we go. I'm on my final two stitches. If you find you're still too loose and you want to do one more round, uh, I would certainly encourage it. That should have been two single stitches there just to keep it even. There we go. Once you have come around, you will have a top that looks something like this. It's still a little bit loose. There's still a little bit of space, but that's okay. That's what the rest of your uh, ornament looks like. What you're going to do is at that point, so this is the end of round 24, working around the bobble, uh, or around 26 if you fully closed in the top. If uh, Also, if you were stuffing it, probably around 24, you want to uh, put in your fiber fill before you finish the last two rounds to close it up. So if you've stuffed it or if you worked around uh, the bobble, once you have completed your final round, you're going to slip stitch into that back loop only and just fasten off your work. And when you fasten off, you're going to leave a long tail. So just leave several inches, just like so. I'm going to pull that tight. At this time, you're going to take your yarn needle, and I just want to make my top a little bit more secure 
and uh, to really close it off nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to weave my uh, needle and yarn in and out around this top round of stitches. So just like so. And what I'm doing is I'm just creating a bit of a drawstring almost. Once I come back to the beginning, I'm simply just going to pull that tight and it's going to bring the top in quite nicely. Just like so. I'm then going to secure it and I just right close to the top of my bobble, I just worked a small uh, knot. You want it to be very small, very close to the top. And then I just wove in my end here. Just kind of tuck it in here, make it a little bit more secure. Cut it off quite close to the tip. And then you're going to take your top and simply put it back on to the top of your bobble. And that's all there is to making this Christmas tree uh, bobble. So thank you so much for joining me and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you'd like to post photos, you can head on over to Facebook uh, or on Instagram and you can tag Rich Textures Crochet there or on Facebook, join the Rich Textures Crochet community and there you can uh, post your photos and see other crochet inspiration there. So thank you so much for joining me and until next time, happy crocheting. Bye.